Back on normal time. Okay, this week in the Python on Hardware Newsletter. And by the way, if you haven't, please subscribe. Adafruit Daily, completely separate website. We don't Free. spam. We don't do anything. There's no ads. Yes, we don't. There's no ads. It's we don't, just really good content. We don't sell you anything. Um, the theme is Python on hardware. And one of the things that uh, we like to use this for is for our own use, which is where are the trends? Where are things, where are things going? What's yeah. happening? And one of the things that we were noticing is conferences are coming back and people are now able to safely go to events, um, share code, share projects, do things, and there's conference badges. So there was a couple events. Uh, Hackaday Supercon was last week. And um, but there's other conferences coming back. Yeah, and EuroPython like, yeah. is, uh, well, the videos just got posted. Um, and if, if you look at what's in the newsletter, we're starting to see more and more badges. Now it's probably because they're easier to do. You can make a badge and it can have an e-ink display and there's code that works on it now. Um, MicroPython, CircuitPython, all the Python flavors are out and that just means you might be able to program it on site. You don't have to download software, it could just show like a USB drive. So um, this week, uh, I wanted to show you a cool badge that we saw. This is from Pi Moroni. And this is for GitHub Universe, which is going on right now. And this is neat because I'm gonna zoom in on the, the badge here if I can. Let's see, boop, boop, boop. Okay. I like this design well, because oh, it, cut out. it has the cutout of Mona, the the Octocat. Yes. And then it has the person's name and there's- e ink. Yeah, and then there's also a QR code. So I was gonna ask you, Lady Ada, because we get asked this all the time and now I would like to just send a link. If someone's thinking of doing a conference badge, what are the, right now, in the current state of chip shortages, software that's available, um, you know, should they do it in Arduino? Should they do it in CircuitPython? Should they do it in MicroPython? What, are, what would you suggest to someone? Well, um, I'm glad you asked. Well, I think, you know, this, I think this badge particularly runs MicroPython, but I think CircuitPython is, is also an excellent, excellent um, use for badges. And there, you know, before, pandemic stopped there were a couple of uh, very cool circuit python based uh badges that were you know for defcon and for pycon and stuff um and the reason is is that you know having having taught and you do workshops or attended a lot of conferences um most people don't have like they're not gonna be able to install ides or the internet is going to be really weird everyone's got their own little computer if you want to have an electronic badge that is customizable um Having it so that you can just plug into a USB cable and then the files are easily editable. You don't have to install any special software. It works on Chromebooks. Um, you know, you can phones, you can iPads, you can even iOS. use it phones on iPads if you have the adapter cable. Um, I think is really powerful. And e-ink here, you know, if you, what, I think it doesn't even have a battery. If on the someone back. has to do like a thousand badges right now, what chip would you suggest they look at? Because that that's the thing that really burnt a lot of folks. Yeah. Is they they were about to do a conference and they couldn't get parts or they were they, they committed to something and then the price changed or yeah. availability changed what what processor would you pick right now well the rp2040 which i think is what this badge is running is is very easy to get it's a very available um it's low cost you can also use the pico or the pico w and just solder it onto the back so it's like a little bit easier to manufacture maybe if you have if you don't want to solder in the very small point for no, millimeter so just pitch put headers in and pop it in. or you know you can have it surface mount on you know and yeah. then and then because that's castellated pads um, I also really strongly recommend the ESP32 S2 um, or the S3, but the S2 is a little cheaper. Actually, the S2 is cheaper than the original ESP32, and you don't have a to have an external USB serial converter, so it's actually like a really good deal. Um, and the ESP32 S2 is is available in modules that are like FCC certified. Uh, they're really easy to pick and place on. Um, you can hand solder them. They're available through like Quick Turn, PCB assembly houses. So I would say you know. ESP32 S2, I personally think Wi-Fi is really great. You know, it's it's fun if you can have some like internet connectivity on the badge. Um, and CircuitPython has great support for the ESP32 S2. If not the S2, then the S3, that's secondary because it also has native USB and it also has like Bluetooth, but it's a little bit, um, it's not as stable as because it's a little newer than the ESP32 um, S2. Um, and then those have native USB. You know, we of course support ESP32 without native USB, but and if you want to use that, use that too, and then you can try out the Wi-Fi workflow. But I think with USB, it's just easier to do the deployment. You know, it's like you can type in the SSID, you know, over USB. 
And then the RP2040, if you don't need Wi-Fi connectivity and you want um, you know, a chip that's easily available. Okay, now tough question, and this isn't a dunk or anything. What chips would you avoid if someone has a, an, an event coming up in the next three to six months? Um, well, you're definitely, I, I, I mean, I think you might be able to get some low cost STM32s, but I think it's a little risky. Okay. And there's definitely no SAMDs. Like you can't get the SAMDs really at all. Okay. So you're not gonna be able to do those. Um, there, I think there, there, I think STM32s might be okay, but I have to look because it depends on what flavor. Um, but none of the ones that are Circuit Python um, friendly, like the F, the STM32 F4 series, which is what we run Circuit Python and best on, uh, those are either very expensive or they're very unavailable. So I think, I think to be honest, the ESPs okay. and, and displays. Have you seen that they've been available? If someone says, "Well, which display should I have on it?" Like, is the ink okay? The ink's like, good. I've, I've yeah. actually, you know, the only thing about e inks is I'll, I'll warn you is it just like every. This has always been true about e inks. They're constantly changing the chipsets. It's very, you know, the vendors that I'm using to get e ink displays. It's like it's like every six months they're like this chip is discontinued. as a new chip. So you're gonna to have to kind of be very flexible with like mm. the the display chipset. They're all very similar, but the commands do vary. Like our drive, we have like 17 drivers for e-ink displays. TFTs, um, the prices have come down quite a bit. So I recommend TFT displays. Okay. Those are very good. Any displays to avoid? Um, you know, uh, one thing that I do warn people on is, is uh, NeoPixels are very, very fun, but they are very tough to uh, pick in place because you know if one LED is bad, you can have to throw the whole thing away, and, and they they crack very easily if you don't have like perfect humidity. Um, we've definitely had that. So have even though it's fun to have an LED matrix display, I'd actually not recommend it um, on a badge. I mean, if you're going to do that, I would use the um, 2020 sized LEDs, the ones that are not like 5050 or 3535, because those don't crack. They don't have the the lensing, the epoxy lens, they're just like fully epoxy. Those are more likely to survive uh, reworking, although they're, of course they're smaller. Um, but I don't, I don't, the one thing I've, I'll just say, like NeoPixels, they love to crack off, they love to break. And you know, if one breaks, all the ones downstream break. So, um, you know, e-ink displays, TFT displays, uh, people love OLEDs, like low cost, you, know, you can even get OLEDs with the headers already soldered in. And I see that all the time, people just, they put four holes and you solder in the OLED. Um, and OLED drivers are, are, of course, a dime a dozen. They're v you know, very, very popular. Okay. So this is our like public service that we wanted to do because it's conference season. Again, folks are asking us uh, to make custom badges. We really don't yeah. want to do custom badges. Um, there are companies that do that, but there's also a lot of questions. And I think I can just point to this video and be like, well, here's stuff to consider because it's usually what's available. Um, what display should I use? You know, pricing. Like, how do I, how do I coordinate all this stuff? First time I've ever done this. You know, and there's all the complexity of a event, and then you add now release a product at the same time. So hopefully this will help someone. And that is this week's Python. Oh, on. one thing I will no. say. Oh, it's sorry, not I'm not done yet. One more thing. Another great reason to use Circuit Python is we have full font support for every kind no, of font right. and the QR code generator. So if you do want to have people have custom fonts. For their custom displays, fonts, images. We and, spend a lot of time on getting and custom QR codes, and Unicode yeah. Unicode support, so foreign um, character sets work. So if you have, yeah. you know, we showed a badge demo where we, if you have your name is in Japanese or your name is in Urdu, that'll yeah. display and just if, fine. If you're looking just to have something that works, you can also just use the clue as is, and there is a project that we have that just yeah. turns it into a badge. Yeah, we just posted it. Okay. Now I'm done. That's Python hardware.